What can we sing to the Most High Yah? My name is uh, Brother Dale, um, church leader here, uh, under shepherd, uh, senior pastor, whatever you want to call it. So I'm on today to address an issue, and I'm going to expand this into a larger episode in, on my new YouTube channel uh, titled Breaking Theology, where I'm going to give you the 70,000 foot view of what I'm about to say, but I have to address this now. The, what started all of this was a conversation really between a serpent and Eve. This serpent mixed, mixed a little bit of truth in with a big lie. Genesis chapter three, read it for yourself. And the reason that becomes important because the man who I'm going to talk about today, Pastor Brian Lawrence, he's mixed like that serpent, a little bit of truth in with a whole lot of lies. And Brian Lawrence, uh, I first came across him, I think it was in 2015. Uh, he put out a video and he proposed that the tool for healing America is a multi-ethnic church. He mixed in a whole lot of truth with that whole lot of lie. And he came up with this niche market that he created for himself to market himself and to set himself apart from the pack. And it's basically a social justice gospel based on flesh-based race. That's all it is. Because the reality is this, there has never been a flesh-based answer to a spiritual problem in all of human history. Let's get the obvious out of the way first. Uh, this needs to be addressed uh, from a Christian apologetic standpoint. Anybody who uses, uh, interjects race into the gospel of Jesus Christ is a false preacher. They're teaching a false gospel. And as African Americans, we were offended over the years as we as our ancestors were enslaved and white slave owners would only read parts of the Bible to them because they were ignorant and unlearned. And they, they, it, was a, it wasn't allowed for them to be able to read as slaves because people that read and get educated are empowered. Empowered slaves are not slaves. They're, they're called free people. So I point that out because they wouldn't allow our ancestors to read or write. So they could just tell them what their version of the Bible was. For instance, in the Old Testament, uh, servants obey your masters. That was misused. The wicked slavery that our people in this country endured was not of the Lord God. Because again, those slave owners based their superiority over black people on a misuse of, ra of a racial gospel. That's what they did. Jesus intended. A little leaven, leaven the whole lump. Purge out the old leaven. So you may be a new lump. So we're going to get the op that obvious out of the way first. So we were angry when they told us that the Bible racially, they were superior to us. They told, they used the book of Genesis each to his own kind. When that, when those things came down the pike and we had education, we knew, we knew they were lying all along, but that's what they told us. And we were angry that the Bible was misused, blonde hair, blue eyed Jesus. But the other side of that saints of God is now that this black man, he's coming along and he's also interjecting race, a physical, uh, as a, as a healer to the world's problems, we say nothing. We criticize white folks for dividing us by using a false gospel, but we don't criticize the black man by using a false gospel to try to bring us back together as a people. The first thing I want to say about that is, again, there's no never been a flesh-based answer to a spiritual problem. One of the huge issues or challenges apologetically that may come with that is even Jesus hanging on a cross. The, his flesh was not the propitiation for our sins. That's what it, it was not because God requires a sinless sacrifice in order uh, to wipe away or, or for us to be reconciled with him to experience that reconcil the reconciliatory process with him. He requires a sinless sacrifice. And I can tell you there is no flesh that has existed that is not necessarily corrupted. Even Jesus was struggling. The Bible says tempted in all ways as we, but yet without sin. What made Jesus sinless and worthy uh, to be uh, our sacrifice was not his flesh. It was the life in his blood. It wasn't even the blood. It was the life in the blood. Remember, the, look of, the book of Leviticus says there's life in the blood. We know there's life in the blood because the book of Genesis early told us, God told uh, Cain, the voice of your brother's blood cries to me from the ground. The voice in the blood, which is the life in the blood. Remember, Jesus hanging on the cross, sinless sacrifice. It was his blood, his sinless, the life in his blood that pre, uh, pleaded for us in a way that, Father, forgive them for they know how they do. You know, that, that came from uh, his mouth, but his blood is what was pleading to us, his innocent life in the blood. It's not the liquid, it's the life in the liquid. The 
the life and the blood will go on for eternity when that physical blood is dried up. So it was not anything to do with Jesus, the tissue in Jesus' body, the blood in his body. It's the life in the blood. The blood carries the life. That's the first thing I want to say. There absolutely is no flesh-based answer as Lawrence puts it to a spiritual problem. Now, where did race come from? Well, we know that race started with Adam and Eve, came down to the sons of Noah after God wiped everybody else out. It came down to the three sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, Japheth. They went different directions, and this is where we get diversity of race. But at some point from Genesis chapter 8 to 10, all the world spoke one language again. God came down and confounded their language, and again, they scattered. There was race uh, in that God created that God sent those people different directions for whatever reason he did. Now, we do know that when we fast forward even to the book of Acts, God confounded languages at Babel, Genesis chapter 10 in the book of Acts. God brought all those languages back together again, because here's the reality is that it is God who created this separation. God is segregation. So for Lawrence to try to say God wants him to bring all these people together, he's really also, not as there no, not only is there not uh, a uh, flesh-based answer to a spiritual problem, now he's accusing God, who told us to be separate and apart from the world, he's accusing God of insufficiency. How's he doing that? He's doing that because there's a reason why God cast Lucifer out of heaven. Lucifer sinned, he decided not to be with God. There's a reason why God cast, separated, segregated Adam and Eve from the Garden of Eden and put the sword there to win every different way so nobody could go in so they couldn't lay hold of the tree of life because they chose not to be with him. He segregated them. I gave you the thing with Noah. He segregated Noah and his family and the animals in the ark while he wiped everybody out. He separated or segregated them. When we think about all through the Old Testament, God had his people, especially the time of Joshua, kill entire nations to keep his people separate because they would become idolatrous if God allowed them, those people to mix. Now, when I lean into that a little bit further, church basically means uh, called out or separated. That's what it means. Be not in the world nor of the world, right? The Bible goes on to give us instructions. I don't have time to give all the scriptures here, but we are to be separated or segregated. God is segregation. That's who he is. He did not come and he did not send Jesus to bring people together as Lawrence proposes. Jesus himself saying, uh, they said, Jesus, your mama here. He said, who's my mother and who's my brother? But those that do the will of my father. And Jesus said, uh, why call ye me Lord, Lord, if I can package those two and do not the things that I say. And we know that people that don't do what Jesus said have no part in him. They will have no part. Uh, in everlasting life. People that change the word of the prophecy of the book of Revelation's name will be blotted out or separated or segregated. So I want to tell you all that the segregation that God has with his people has nothing to do with race, but it has everything to do with holiness. So I want to be clear about that. It's not the evil segregation that happened here in America. That becomes important because if God himself separated Shem, Ham, and Japheth went different directions. They repopulated the earth. We know that a lot of times geography scientifically has a lot to do with our features. We know that on an atomic level, our environment has a lot to do with how we look. Our nose size, our lip size, eyes, it has a lot to do with that. So if it is God who sent Shem, Ham, and Japheth, if he created that, sent them out to separate places, why is it bad? Further, why did the apostle Paul never address racial issues in any of his epistles? Why did Jesus Christ himself never address necessarily racial issues? Now, he did say, I come to the lost house of Israel. That's what he said. But he eventually sent Paul out to the Gentiles. And did you realize it was Ephesians who ministered to Ephesians? The Ephesian church was built, planted by Paul, but later developed by Ephesians. Colossians, they ministered to Colossians. Now, Rome, that was kind of a different animal because Rome was made up of a whole lot of things. And that, that's hermeneutically sound. But I'm pointing that out, saints, to get to this place as well. Anybody, again, that enters race into their gospel is preaching a false gospel. What diversity then, Brother Dale, as I end here, I'm going to blow this case out. What diversity then does God love, Brother Dale? He told us. He gave some apostles and prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, bring deacons in, not necessarily called by God, but six, fivefold ministry, that's a lie, from the pit of hell. God works in sixes with the work of his hand. That's hermeneutically sound. Not only that. So when we talk about diversities of gifts, the, the scripture says to some knowledge, to some wisdom, to some healing, to some the gift of tongues, on and on, right? Miracles. 
God gives us these diversity of gifts. So what I'm telling you today, diversity of race is not godly. It's flesh based and no and flesh is corrupt and no flesh is going to see God. As a matter of fact, you know what happened. God had to hide Moses in the cleft of the rock and cover his eyes because Moses flesh couldn't look on God's spirit. That's how it is. So when we talk about diversity in the church, the only diversity that we should be worried about is diversity of gifts. What Lawrence is actually saying is a racially diverse church is a much stronger church than other churches. That is a lie from the pit of hell because the church that walks in holiness and practices the diversity of gifts, whatever their ethnicity, is a stronger church than any multi-ethnic church will ever be. So and. As I end this, I want you to follow me over there because this case, I might even write a book. This case has to be blown out because this thing has really got my, it, it makes my zeal wax hot because Lawrence is a false teacher. He's now become a false prophet and he's propagating a, a flesh-based answer to a spiritual problem. We wrestle not, the Bible says, against flesh and blood, but against dominions, principalities, uh, rules, doctors get spiritual wickedness in high places. We wrestle against spirits here. And I don't care about bringing all these people into this racially diverse church. There may be people set apart to do that. We got, I got a brother here, right here in Waterloo. He's a black dude. He just has that gift to bring those people together. I get that. But for lords to step out and say that this is the answer to a spiritual problem is to gather white folks in church with black folks is false gospel. Lords, I'm going to tell you this. I, I followed you and your message for some years. That's why I'm here saying this. Anytime, Lords, you preach that false message and eventually God's going to judge you, bro, because you are lying to people. You are telling people that there's a flesh-based answer to a spiritual problem. I heard all your cases. They were very well put together, but the premise of your case is flawed. Because what you are not saying is there is no flesh-based answer to a spiritual problem. You built your entire doctrine on a shaky foundation. What house can stand if the foundation is shaky? A house divided against itself is not going to stand spiritually or even physically. You need to repent, Lord. I understand you believe that the Holy Spirit gave you that message. I get that. I got a dear brother around here that is swearing up and down. God told him to bring everybody together, even his enemies. He swears up, even though Jesus said he came to pit people against uh, each other, even though Jesus is the most divisive figure in the Bible, my brother is saying that Jesus sent him to bring everybody together. He's propagating a false doctrine. The Lord ain't told him that. Couldn't have. What fellowship has light with darkness? You need to repent, bro. This is not a game because you have misled people and God has given you your reward. God is not going to tolerate what you do. You need to repent. You need salvation and you need to stop lying to people. Repent, Lord, so be it.